Why are so many houses in California made of wood, even though we're in some of the highest fire-prone areas? This is something I've been seeing time and time again after these insane LA wildfires. So many people, especially people who are in Europe, are like, what are you guys doing? Why don't you just build whatever the fireplaces are made out of? Those are the only things standing. Why do you keep building out of wood? So that's exactly what I want to talk to you about today because there is a reason. I know it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but it is something we do. Hey guys, I'm Bryn Young. I'm a licensed architect here in San Diego. California isn't just a wildfire zone. It's also a really high earthquake zone. So We have, I mean, we have a lot of different natural disasters that we have to try to adhere to. We've got flooding, we've got all the things. But earthquakes and wildfires are both huge, important things that architects have to think about in their designs when you're designing a home or a building in California. So this common question comes up all the time, like, why don't you just design everything out of CMU or brick? Like, what they do that on the East Coast. How come you're not doing it over there? And the reason is, is because there's strong limitations from the building codes of what we're allowed to do when it comes to brick or CMU. This is because these types of materials are really poor during earthquakes. We need flexibility, right? An earthquake, it's about dissipating this intense energy and you need a material that is flexible enough to move with the earthquake to absorb and release that energy. And there's there's different needs and requirements for it. Now, yes, a CMU wall or a brick wall is great for flammability, but there's no flexibility. And so they can crack and they can crumble when it comes to an earthquake. So when you're building in California, you have to battle this balance of flexibility and flammability. So the best thing that we can do is First of all, realize it's not going to be perfect, okay? We have to try to create a balance between them. And then also understand how we can implement design choices to be best for both worlds. So a house that survives a wildfire but collapses during an earthquake is not ideal. A uh, situation where it will withstand an earthquake but then completely burn down during a wildfire is also not ideal. That said, just because you are designing with wood, it doesn't mean you're not designing for fire safety. There are certain design choices, material choices that we can implement even with wood that still is fire resistant. So here's how architects can address that flammability issue and also how you can understand it from a client perspective when say your architect is telling you that we're going to be designing with a wood-framed envelope even though you're in a high-fire rated area. So first of all, typically we combine wood with a non-combustible material. So this can look like stucco. This is why you'll see stucco often. There's fiber cement siding that you can do, and oftentimes this is covering a wood interior. Also, there are times where we will see maybe a brick exterior or a concrete exterior. And typically this is in combination with a wood exterior. And when you are designing this for an earthquake, there's going to be a a seismic separation, meaning it's going to be slightly apart so that if there is an earthquake, the main portion of the building has flexibility to move and there's a slight gap or a slight uh, separation between that and this really rigid material so that if that crumbles or this movement isn't going to affect this to crumble or if this crumbles, it's not going to affect this. Does that make sense? There's also different ways that we can make a increase the fire resistance of a wall or of a building element so that it resists the fire longer. And this is something really important to remember even with earthquakes, with fire, the goal isn't in the end to completely save the building. Of course, of course, that would be ideal. 
But the goal is to get people to safety and reduce the deaths. And I know it's hard to say, and of course, it's sad to see buildings go down, but the goal is to keep them safe enough, long enough for people to evacuate, for there to get safety, and not just get demolished so quickly. So with that said, there's things like fire rated walls that give a certain amount of time for people to exit for safety, to be able to evacuate, and also to maybe be able to protect it by extinguishing fire, uh, earthquakes. There's not a whole lot that you can do, I don't think, um, you, but you want to evacuate, right? So that's really the critical thing that we want to remember. Yes, of course, protecting the building is the goal too, but really the safety of the people is the number one goal. So if you can create a wall that has a two hour, four hour uh, rating, what that means is it should technically, based on standard situations, take that many hours to burn. So if it's a four hour, for example, that gives enough time for people to evacuate, to get away, hopefully to extinguish. If not, then to get away and evacuate. Now, if you are using wood, like we just saw in LA, that viral video or the viral photo of that one house, the only one standing in Pacific Palisades. And what was his exterior? Wood. It had wood paneling on the exterior. So there are certain things that we can do to prevent a wildfire devastation, even though we're still using wood. There are certain non-flammable treatments that we can add to wood. There is pairing that wood element with non-combustible treatments like or, or materials, like I mentioned stucco. There are windows that are important, like tempered windows, so that windows aren't just shattering, which allow embers to go in. So when you have a tempered window, they have a higher heat capacity, so they won't shatter. And then you know, that also protects the interior from embers flying in. There's uh, roof details like no vents, non-exposed eaves, because what happens is embers get sucked into the attics or into the eaves and stay there and then catches on fire. Roof's on fire, the house burns down, right? And then also landscaping choices. In one of the other videos about that viral house and what design elements they did, I went into that a little bit more of the landscaping and defensible space that is designed around the house that makes a big difference to the spread of fire. So construction in California has to balance, again, this earthquake and this wildfire prone area. And I know from outside perspective, it can seem crazy and scary and, you know, like, duh, why don't you do this or this or this? But it's just not that simple. And so us as architects can do our best to design a safe enough building where people can be protected, can evacuate, can hopefully not get destroyed, but the main thing is keeping people safe. So if you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments. We have tons of architects that are part of this channel. We have aspiring architects part of this channel. Leave your comments below and we'll make videos. We'll talk about it because it is super critical, especially if you are an aspiring architect or if you are an architect looking for reciprocity here in California. There are a lot of design elements that we have to make sure that we understand and we're adhering to. Let's keep this conversation going. It is so important now more than ever with these past few years of completely devastating wildfires. We need to do better. We need to understand it better. And hopefully as we're real rebuilding these cities, we can rebuild with a fire conscious mindset. All right. Have a great one. I'll talk to you soon. And in the meantime, you can check out this video next.